as far as management is concerned, I mean, they're anti-union. There's no two ways about that. They do not want the union on the place. And they'll do, do whatever they can to, uh, to prevent that happening. Um, look, personally myself, I've, uh, you know, I've, I've tried on numerous occasions to uh, contact management at Cadia um, to no avail. They just won't return calls, etc. Quite a number of people, um, we, have, we have a number of members out there and, and that is growing all the time. Um, a number of people have told me that in one way or another, when they're, at one time or another when they're being interviewed, um, the interview process or um, talking um, to management generally, particularly in the interview process, initial interview process, um, you know, directly or indirectly they're being asked, are you or have you ever been? A member of the union and uh, there are some people that have uh, acknowledged the fact confirmed the fact that they have been members of unions and have not um, have not been appointed how does this reflect in the sense of the the sort of contracts and conditions that the company um, exerts upon its employees out there well the the uh, the contracts as you call it I mean as part of an Australian workplace agreement workplace agreement which expires in 2013. Now under which was put in place under work choices. Now under an AWA I mean the ball is totally in the employer's court. They can hire and fire and just do whatever they like basically. Yeah that's that's true I mean we can use Telfer in Western Australia as, a, uh, as an example. Um, it's probably around 20, if not more percent, um, less than they're, they're actually earning uh, over there. Now, some people say, oh, but look, you know, you, you can go home at the end of your shift here and you can do this and you can do that, and it's, you've got this nice, you know, um, city of orange, beautiful city of orange right at your doorstep, and you do all these things. That's, that's totally irrelevant. It's totally irrelevant. For the same work, people should be being paid the same amount of money. And look, there's other, other uh, aspects to that too. Um, you've got fly in, fly out. I mean, they've got this great big plane that comes from Brisbane, I believe, and it stops here in Orange and then goes to Melbourne and off to Telfer. Um, well, I'm led to believe um, that when people are, are actually in transit, say from Orange to Telfer, they're not being paid for that. Um, when it's all, you know, now um, representatives of Newcrest would probably say that that is factored in to their, uh, to their um, uh, wages, their salary. Yeah, okay, that's, that's something we could debate. As far as safety is concerned, look, I've got no doubts that Newcrest mining at peak level um, certainly have safety as, as one of their main priorities. I've got no doubts about that. Um, and I'm not, you know, but, but what I have found, and I've spoken to many, many people out there, um, what people at peak level, senior management, what they believe is happening and what is actually happening down here are two entirely different things. Because the people who run the show down here, they're under pressure, like everybody else in business today, to perform. And, uh, and there's, there's some, there's from time, shortcuts taken uh, and things are not quite the way they should be. You see, the difference between a normal work site and a mine site is that the mine manager, he has, he has total control. He is the, the grand poobah, let's, let's put it that way. He has total control. Now, he doesn't have to let us on site, he doesn't have to let police on site. And there have been instances where police and fire brigade haven't been allowed on site. There have been instances out there when, you know, just last year there was an instance where a, um, a bulldozer and a very large bulldozer, I believe a Caterpillar D11, um, slid off the, the top of a, a big pile of uh, rock. And why did it slide off that pile of rock? Because the tracks had worn down to virtually nothing. Now, this is alleged that this was the reason for it. It's also alleged that on several occasions in the preceding months that thing had been defected because of that problem but it wasn't pulled offline. Now you know there was a, a fellow, an employee of Newcrest driving that thing. Now he fortunately, by the grace of God, he survived it. 
Well, yeah, I think, um, and I think you've only got to look at some of the comments that um, Tony McPaul has made uh, recently within the last week or 10 days, I think. But there may come a time when it may open, um, depending on a few things. If I, was a, uh, if I was a cynical person, I would suggest that um, maybe they're uh, closing it um, for legitimate reasons that uh, they need to uh, do certain works to shore up uh, the place to make sure it's safe, make sure they've got access to it, and whatever else they may do, and then they may open it, as he said himself, he's quoted as saying it. I would, uh, and, and let me say this, I, I'm, as I said, if I was a cynical person, I'd go so far as to suggest that they may even um, re-employ people on traineeships. There's an amount of money, um, you could be looking at four, four and a half thousand dollars, possibly four thousand four hundred if you want to be precise, um, and there are other benefits as far as training is concerned, plus um, if um, payroll, um, you know, um, reductions in payroll tax. I'm not saying they're a bad citizen, um, but the perception that everybody that works out there is, you know, happy as, as Larry because they're, they're earning all this money, that's not correct. That, that perception is wrong. There are lots and lots of people out there who are um, extremely stressed. Um, they're suffering um, um, various forms of uh, depression uh, because of the stresses that it puts on, on them work-wise and because of um, the, the pressures that it puts on their, their family. In that regard, I think there, there's a lot of work could be done to improve the lot of the you know, the guy at the gold face, let me put it that way, and, and woman, the person at the, the gold face. I think there's plenty that could be done there. There are so many people out there whose quality of life is not good, not only at, in, in the community but at Cadia. Their quality of life is not great because of the pressures that are on them.